Well, right now we're going to derive some equations from what we know about the relationship between acceleration and velocity and time. And uh, the first um, equation that we're going to derive right here, I'm just going to be uh, calling it velocity as function of time. That means that as time elapses, uh, velocity will change and we'll be able to determine that or predict that of time. So uh, a couple things we need to establish first. If, if it's true that the average velocity a, I'm sorry, if the average acceleration, acceleration a, b, is the same thing as the instantaneous acceleration, what that means and what we're saying is that in all of our scenarios, acceleration is going to be constant. Uh, at any one time, the acceleration, uh, the average acceleration is going to be the same thing as the instantaneous acceleration. That we have to establish, and that's going to be true of all of our problems, and that will make the rest of our um, problem derivations work. So let's go back to one of our equations that we know. A average, or that is the average velocity, which is the same thing as instantaneous in this case, is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. And we can kind of elongate that a little bit by taking our final velocity minus our initial velocity and putting that over t final minus t initial. Now this is just notation right here, but one thing that should be pointed out is what does t initial really mean? Well, that means time equals zero. t initial equals zero. So um, however time, however we're marking time, this is going to be zero time, and then time final, um, or the, the difference between our final time and our initial time is really just what we call the change in time. So from now on, I'm just going to refer to that as our change in time, delta t. So let's rewrite this. Average acceleration, a v, is equal to Vf minus Vi over the change in time, the however much time has elapsed. Well, we can clean this up a little bit. We're going to take our delta t and bring it up. We're going to multiply both sides by delta t, so it will come up to be alongside the, uh, uh, the average acceleration. So this means we have average acceleration, that's A average times delta T, equals final velocity minus initial velocity. Further yet, if we add our VI to both sides, that means our final derivation, our final equation is going to be final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times the change in time. Velocity is a function of time, equation derivation number one.